this channel. We might give up in studying brain and CNS, but CNS is the most interesting topic in physiology. So let's start part 2 of sensory system. Part 1 is described in previous. Let's discuss some points about sensation. Definition of sensation is feeling arise by change in internal and external environment of the system. Through sensation, person becomes aware of body and surrounding. Now classification of sensation. Sensation is divided in two types, general and special. General sensation is further divided into three types, superficial, deep and visceral. Superficial sensation examples are touch, pain, temperature, vibration, etc. Receptors for superficial sensation are located in skin or mucous membrane. The examples of deep sensation are sensation of joints, muscles or tendons. Receptors for deep sensation are located in deeper body tissues. For visceral sensation, examples are pain from visceral structures, concentration of glucose in blood, and receptors for visceral sensation are concerned with internal environment of body. Now, special sensation. Special sensation includes vision, auditory or hearing, gustatory or taste, olfactory or smell, and equilibrium. Now let's start our sensory pathway part 2 and topic name is anterolateral system. Anterolateral system is divided into four types. Let, first, lateral spinothalamic tract for pain and temperature. Second, anterior spinothalamic tract for crude touch and pressure. Third, spinocerebellar tract for proprioception. And others include spinotactal tract, spinoolivary tract, spinoreticular tract, and, spi and in spinal spinocerebellar tract is further divided into four types: dorsal spinocerebellar tract, ventral spinocerebellar tract, cuneocerebellar tract, and rostral spinocerebellar tract. Now discussing about lateral spinothalamic tract and it is for temperature and pain sensation. So first discuss. So first let's discuss the temperature sensation. Fibers which are carrying pain and temperature sensation are almost same. They are A delta and C fibers. Temperature sensation are carried out by free nerve endings which is present mainly in skin. Receptors for temperature sensation are of two types, cold and warm. Cold receptors are 4 to 10 times more than warm receptor. And cold sensation is carried by A delta fibers which is like alienated fiber. Where warm, warm sensation is carried by C fibers which are unmyelinated fibers. Range of activity of cold receptors is 10 to 40 degrees Celsius and for warm receptors range of activity is 30 to 45 degrees Celsius. For, for cold receptors their peak firing is below 25 degrees Celsius and in warm receptors if temperature, temperature becomes below 30 degrees Celsius they are insensitive and at above 45 degrees Celsius, they are replaced by nauseous receptor that is painful receptor. So it is called heat pain. Now you just revise this. Cold receptor a carried by A delta fiber, warm sensation is carried by C, C fiber. Now range of activity for cold sensation is 10 to 40 degrees Celsius and for warm receptor will uh, 30 to 45 degrees Celsius. For cold sensation, cold is below 25 degrees Celsius, and for warm receptor below 30 degrees Celsius, they become insensitive, and above 45 degrees Celsius, they are replaced by nauseous receptor, that is painful receptor, and hence it is called heat pain. Cold, cold receptor and uh, warm receptor, they both are moderately adapting receptor that is they never adapt to 100 percent 
example is when temperature drops from 33 degree celsius to 30 degree celsius firing of motors get initially increases but when temperature persists firing gradually decreases it means they are trying to adapt but when temperature moves from 30 degree celsius degree celsius firing rate of hot receptor tremendously increases but when 33 degree celsius remains steady firing rate decreases you can see in this diagram very clearly example of this when we use cold water over body firstly we feel cold but by the time we doesn't feel cold because at first rate of firing of receptors increases then it gradually decreases if tissue temperature is raised beyond 46 degree celsius warm receptors does not respond but cold receptors discharge at an increasing rate producing a mixed sensation of cold and pain this is called paradoxical cold fiber discharge this is because of tissue damage at above 45 degree celsius Now, thermal receptors are present on chest, nose, nipples, anterior surface of arm, forearm, abdomen, etc. Now, second example of lateral spinothalamic tract is pain sensation. So, let's discuss about pain sensation. Definition of pain is sensory and emotional experience. associated with actual or potential tissue damage pain receptors are also called as nociceptors receptors they are located at the ends of small c unmyelinated or myelinated a delta fibers now properties for pain sensation are importance of pain sensation is it is protective in nature because it is not adapting stimulus stimulus like noxious chemicals like acetylcholine bradykinin serotonin h plus ion k plus ion prostaglandins pain is due to three types of stimulus they are mechanical thermal and chemical fast pain is due to mechanical and thermal stimulus and slow pain is mainly due to chemical stimulus and sometimes due to persist mechanical and thermal stimulus receptors for pain sensation is free nerve endings they are present at superficial layer of skin periosteum arterial wall joint surface and etc adaptation for pain sensation is it is known or slow adapting receptors therefore it is protective in nature no fibers for fast pain no fiber is a delta fiber and for slow pain no fiber is c delta c fiber neurotransmitter so the neurotransmitter is spinal cord there are two neurotransmitter different for each type of pain that is glutamic acid for fast pain and substance p for slow pain at the level of spinal cord and lewis p factor for muscle pain now pathway for pain sensation is lateral spinothalamic tract which is which is specifically for other for different the, which is different for fast pain and slow pain for fast pain pathway is neo spinothalamic which is specific in nature and for slow pain pathway is paleo spinothalamic which is diffuse and non specific in nature now localization of localization of pain sensation usually pain is poorly localized and superficial pain is comparatively better localized than deep pain types of pain first somatic pain somatic pain is further divided into two types superficial pain and deep pain superficial pain comes from skin cutaneous tissue and deep pain comes from comes from muscle and tendons 
causes for somatic pain are injury inflammation in if in in inflammation there is risk of bradykinin prostaglandin etc and therefore pain arise in that part of body third cause is ischemia fourth is muscle spasm that is over use of muscle therefore pain arise second type is referred pain pain that is away from damaged tissue in referred pain main top main role playing is dermatome rule visceral pain is offered referred to embryonic corresponding dermatome dermatome and viscera are innervated by nerves arising from same spinal segment example cardiac pain is referred to inside of left arm second pain of appendix and ovary umbilicus third diaphragm to right shoulder theories of referred pain are first convergence theory here you can see in this diagram sensory nerve carrying pain sensation from viscera and sensory nerve carrying pain sensation from converts onto same second order neuron second theory is facilitation theory in you if you can see in the diagram sensory nerve carrying pain sensation from viscera via branches that is collateral stimulate sensory nerve carrying pain sensation from dermatome there therefore producing subliminal fringe effect third type is visceral pain more commonly Associated with muscle guarding, unpleasant emotions, and autonomic changes, nausea, vomiting, low BP, and etc. Now, what is what is the meaning of muscle guarding? Person is treating a particular area that has injured before with more than necessary care. Visceral pain causes referred and radiating pain like viscera to peritoneum. causes for visceral pain are first over distension of hollow viscera which is more commonly second ischemia third obstruction fourth spasm of hollow viscera viscera is insensitive to pain edema of liver and alveoli of lungs but liver capsule bronchi parietal pleura are very sensitive to pain now fourth type is ischemic muscle pain during muscle activity lewis p factor like adenine k plus lactic acid etc pass from muscle to tissue space and get cleared by blood but if level of lewis p factor becomes high example during exercise pain starts till it is cleared clinical for is muscle pain is intermittent claudication that is leg pain on walking when arteries are blocked second angina pectoris e that is chest pain on exercise when coronary arteries are blocked now let's revise properties of pain once purpose or pain, purpose or importance for pain sensation is protective stimulus are chemicals like acetylcholine bradykinin serotonin h plus k plus and prostaglandins pain is due to three types of stimulus mechanical fast pain is due to mechanical and thermal stimulus slow pain is due to chemical stimulus and sometimes due to persistent mechanical and thermal stimulus pain sensation are a free now endings present at superficial layer of skin periosteum arterial wall joint surface adaptation for pain sensation is known or slow adapting receptors therefore it is protective in nerve fibers fast pain is carried by a delta fibers slow pain is carried by c type of nerve fibers neurotransmitter glutamic acid for fast pain at spinal cord substance p for slow pain at spinal cord Lewis P factor for muscle pain. Pathway lateral spinothalamic tract which is further divided into two. For fast pain, neo spinothalamic tract that is specific in nature. 
and for slow pain paleospinothalamic tract which is diffuse and non specific in nature okay now let's discuss about pain pathway pain pathway is dual in nature that is it is different for fast pain and it is different for slow pain fast sharp pain pathway is known as neospinothalamic tract and slow chronic pain pathway is known as paleospinothalamic tract fast pain is carried by a delta fiber and slow pain is carried by c fiber speed for fast pain is 12 to 30 meter per second and for slow pain 0.5 to 2 meter per second the actions associated with fast pain are withdrawal and sympathetic and for slow pain reactions associated are emotional and autonomic now let's discuss main thing that is pain pathway you can see in this diagram that fibers from pain temperature and touch receptor are coming in spinal cord through dorsal root dorsal horn of spinal cord and they enter in spinal cord through marginal nucleus for fast pain and substantial gelatinous are for slow pain and after entering in spinal cord they cross obliquely anterior commissure and enters in lateral funiculus of spinal cord and from there they ascend along with anterior spinothalamic tract and forms a bundle known as spinal lamniscus and in the form of spinal lamniscus they crosses medulla and terminate in ventral posterior lateral nucleus of thalamus now from here there are two pathways for fast pain it is different and for slow pain it is different so fast pain fibers will terminate in ventral posterior ventral posterior lateral nucleus and from there they they from their third order neuron arise and it terminate in primary sensory cortex but slow pain fiber terminate in intralaminal nucleus of thalamus and from there it moves to cerebral cortex let's see this in theory pain sensation has a dual pathway one for fast pain and other for slow pain no scaring pain sensation are from face by right is fifth cranial norm from esophagus trachea and pharynx ninth and tenth cranial norm from thoracic and abdominal viscera sympathetic nerves from pelvic region parasympathetic nerves from skin of rest of by free nerve endings and rectal spinal spinothalamic tract from face trigeminal nerve from esophagus trachea and pharynx 9th and 10th cranial nerve from thoracic and abdominal viscera sympathetic nerve from pelvic region parasympathetic nerve and from skin of rest of body by free nerve endings and lateral spinothalamic tract now here there is one one point which is different in this from face fibers terminate at ventral posterior medial nucleus of thalamus not at ventral posterior lateral nucleus of thalamus thalamus whereas all 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 the sense all these sensation carrying nerves terminate at ventral posterior lateral nucleus of thalamus now pathway in the form of theory first order neuron arise from receptors that is free now endings to dorsal horn of spinal cord marginal nucleus for fast pain and substantial gelatinosa for slow pain second order neuron arise from marginal nucleus and substantial gelatinosa cross to opposite side through anterior commissure and finally ascend in lateral column of spinal cord as neospinothalamic for fast pain and paleospinothalamic tract for slow pain with anterior spinothalamic tract and both of them together form a bundle known as spinal lamniscus they relay at ventral basal complex of 
thalamus and nearby structure. Third order neuron arise from ventral ventropasal complex of thalamus, mainly fast and few small slow pain fibers. Terminate at primary sensory cortex. Termination all fast pain fibers and few 20% slow pain fibers terminate at primary sensory cortex while majority of slow pain fibers terminate at intralaminal nucleus of thalamus and from there they go to cerebral cortex. Center for pain sensation is primary sensory cortex but is perceived at level of thalamus and reticular formation. Due to heavy connection of C fibers with reticular formation, that is, more number of branch to reticular formation, even in slow pain, because reticular formation is continu continuously active due to more number of collaterals to reticular formation. C fiber gives more number of collaterals to reticular formation, and therefore, even in slow pain. We can't sleep because reticular formation is continuously active and whereas A delta fibers gives less branch to reticular formation. Now difference between fast pain and slow pain are fast pain is sharp, slow pain is dull. Fast pain starts 0.1 second after stimulus and slow pain starts 1 second after stimulus. Fast pain is carried by A delta no fibers where a slow pain is carried by C nerve fibers. Neurotransmitter at dorsal horn of spinal cord is glutamic acid and slow pain for slow pain neurotransmitter at dorsal horn of spinal cord is substance P. Reactions associated with fast pain are withdrawal reflex, tachycardia and hypertension and reactions associated with slow pain are unpleasant emotions and autonomic reaction like nausea, vomiting, etc. Fast pain is better localized and whereas slow pain is poorly localized because of the connection of it. Now let's discuss about reactions related reactions associated with pain sensation. Reactions that are associated with pain sensation are muscle spasm. Muscle spasm that is due to overuse of muscle pain takes place. Second withdrawal reflex that is automatic withdrawal of a limb from a painful stimulus. Third arousal due to collaterals to reticular formation. Unpleasant emotions due to collateral to limbic system. Autonomic changes like nausea, vomiting, pulse, and weakness. Here you, you can see first order neuron takes first order neuron takes stimulus to dorsal horn or spinal cord and then dorsal horn or spinal cord then then A delta fibers ascend towards thalamus and terminate in somatosensory cortex where the C give some collaterals to reticular formation the main branching to reticular formation is mainly for alertness okay and from then it is also give collaterals to hypothalamus and limbic system that for behavioral and emotional responses to pain okay so here example is like if someone slept you you feel more pain because sleeping has bad emotional memory. But if you save some blind people from road traffic in this action, you are injured, then pain because you you have done some good work. It is only because of this collateral branching to reticular formation and branching to hypothalamus limbic system. Branching to reticular formation is mainly for alertness.